Hello and welcome to our Evensong service today. We celebrate tonight the Feast of the Epiphany, the showing of Christ to the visiting wise men. The sign of the good news of Christmas joy is not just for some, but is good news for all people everywhere. God's love comes to earth and is not restricted to only some, but his all-encompassing love, his outrageous love, his eternal love is for all people. This epiphany is for all people. Let us acknowledge his love for us now as we prepare to worship him. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times to humbly acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. O 
Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that we may turn from our wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that, at the last, we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, open thou our lips.
Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall be acceptable on my altar, and I will glorify my glorious house. Who are these that fly like a cloud, and like doves to their windows? For the coastlands shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from far away, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you.
On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. Our collect prayers for tonight. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may alway incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family, Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops, priests, deacons, and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And in a few moments of stillness and quiet, we offer to God our prayers and thoughts and intentions for this new year. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Christmas isn't over. I've heard this week of tinsel tiredness, people who went early with their Christmas decorations to bring a little sparkle and light into a dreary 2020. They are now tinseled out and want to remove their tree and decorations from their home. The sparkle didn't last, the light wasn't real. But Christmas isn't over. And I don't just mean the fact that the liturgical season of Christmas continues until the 6th of January, the Feast of Epiphany, that feast that we celebrate in our Evensong tonight. No, Christmas and Epiphany are a continuation one of the other. That's why we keep our church Christmas tree up until the first weekend in February, all the way through the season of Epiphany. That's why the star will be shining brightly outside our church as well, until then. The sparkle that Christmas brings lives on. The light that we celebrate is the light that the darkness cannot overcome. For Christmas and Epiphany go together. At Christmas we celebrate the birth, the coming of God to earth, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, the song of the angels, the obedience of Mary and Joseph in allowing God to work in and through them to bring his divine plans to fruition. But Epiphany points us back at the Christmas and says, did you see? Did you recognise what just happened? You might have missed it in all the gifts and the tinsel and the wrapping paper and the food and the drink and the chocolates. All that food, all that drink and all those chocolates. Did you really get the message, Epiphany asks? Have you truly seen what God is doing here? Epiphany, the revealing, the awakening, the ta-da. What you thought was a baby in a manger, oh, that's God, ta-da. What you thought was a simple birth in a stable, that was God coming to earth, ta-da. What you thought was a night like any other, 
was the pivotal point in human history. Ta-da! Epiphany is the season where we will once again hear the stories of the times that Jesus was shown to be God's Son, the Messiah, God with us. Tonight we hear of the first time the disciples believed in him, that miracle of a wedding turning water into wine at Cana. There's that push from his mother, as all good mothers know, when to push their children forward a little, to give some encouragement, and then to tell the others around, do as you're told. And there is the miracle, the hiding of the truth from all apart from the servants, the lowliest people at the wedding. Not the guests, but they were workers in the background. They were the ones that knew what had happened when no one else knew the miracle that had taken place. And there is the revealing of this to the disciples. The glory of God revealed to them and they believed. And from there on, it's not a straightforward journey. They had many times where they were rebuked for their lack of faith or, or their slowness to understand. But here they saw, they understood and they believed. Christmas isn't over. That message of the angels, peace on earth and goodwill to all, is not a distant echo in history. It's a promise of God for today, for this year that is ahead of us. For Christmas isn't over. The babe lying in the manger is Emmanuel, which as we know means God is with us. Now, today, here in 2021. Christmas isn't over. And Epiphany is the time where that truth can be revealed to us. Maybe for the first time, maybe once again, the truth that God's love is for us. God's promises made at Christmas are for us. God's truth is there for us to be seen. And God is with us even today. So as you begin to take down your Christmas decorations, Please remember that they are only decorations. The truth of Christmas still continues beyond the shedding of pine needles or the twinkle of outside lights. God is with us, Christmas proclaims. And Epiphany answers, yes, he is. Come and see that revelation for yourself. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those whom you pray for, this day and evermore. Amen. from Persian lands of light to Jordan follow the pointing stars and this the quest of the travelers beware 